Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 473. My opponent played e4, and um, cancel that, <laughs> e4, and I finally got the chance to play the uh, con Sicilian, which I've been meaning to play for a while. So it uh, starts out like a normal Sicilian, c5, knight f3, and then instead of following up with the d6, which can lead to classical lines, or uh, such as the knight or the dragon, um, the, the uh, scavening, and um, or um, knight, knight c6, the second choice there, leading to things like the Sveshnikov and Kalashnikov. Um, third choice here is e6, and this uh, leads to either the Khan or the Taimanov Sicilian. Taimanov was a name I couldn't uh, think of during the video. So the main way of playing this is uh, d4, opening things up, the open Sicilian, but you can also play knight c3 and avoid sort of the main theoretical continuations. It's a decent move. But um, <clears throat> d4... We exchange. And um, I'm keeping the chess engine off, by the way, so we can do some uh, tactical quizzes. Anyway, knight c6 right here. That's the Taimanov Sicilian. Um, immediately challenging this knight here. And this knight can then trade itself for the knight on c6 at any time. Or it can uh, just stay there for a while. Usually the tension is maintained for a while. Uh, that's a fine way to play. But the Khan Sicilian is uh, it's, uh, delaying the knight c6 move and playing some other moves first. So a6, just keeping pieces out of this uh, b5 square, which is important in many Sicilians. Um, knight to c3, continuing to develop, or bishop to d3. My opponent plays this on the next move, but this is very typical as a response to the con to put this bishop on d3, um, because it's no longer, um, you don't need to protect the, um, the knight on d4, so it doesn't matter that the bishop is blocking the uh, defense of that knight by the queen, and uh, adds extra protection to the uh, e4 pawn and prepares a push of the pawn to e5 and opening up that diagonal. So it's a common idea. And my opponent plays that on the next move. So we get into a pretty mainline position. So I could once again play knight c6 and go into a time and off. But uh, queen c7 is how you stay in con lines. And now bishop d3. So he gets this move in anyway. And there's still no pressure on this knight. I'm still delaying this uh, knight c6 idea. I play uh, the main move now is uh, knight f6. You can get this knight out without worrying about the um, e5 push because the queen is controlling the e5 square. One of the ideas of this uh, queen on c7, which uh, if you haven't played the system before, it looks a bit funny at first, perhaps. Um, and now white can continue with f4 and e5, sort of insisting on that e5 move, but uh, that's a bit risky. It opens up this diagonal, uh, which I, I can exploit with bishop to c5. Uh, my opponent castled here, which is the top choice, and I play bishop c5 here. That's... Another idea with the Khan Sicilian is you can get the bishop outside the pawn chain before playing the move uh, d6. But it has some drawbacks. We'll see that in the game. Knight c6 is also a move here. So anyway, bishop c5. The knight drops back to b3, a very logical response, kicking the bishop. And now the main move is to bring the bishop back to e7. And um, <clears throat> that, that deals with the potential threat of uh, bishop to g5 here preparing to meet that pin. Um, but I, I dropped the bishop back to a7, and it's a very interesting diagonal for this bishop. And there were some tactics based on that later in the game that I unfortunately didn't take advantage of. And now, you know, bishop g5 is probably the, the main move here, but rookie one is not bad. Um, so white is doing fine through this part of the game. And now I can play knight c6. Notice that the knight is coming out here to c6, and it's going to get to stay there for a while because there's no knight to trade it off. And it can come over via e5 to the king side, which we see that kind of plan happening in the game. In fact, right here, I don't have any good way to defend against um, bishop takes f6, messing up my pawns. But I decide uh, that's not too bad. And in fact, um, after this move and the exchange... The chess engine was rating this position as favorable for uh, black. So uh, that's that's uh, interesting. But it turns out that the king is fairly safe over here in the center of the board, surrounded by all these pawns. And now there's an open G file, so I can get maybe some pressure against the king. But, uh, well, white starts to activate. Queen to H5. I play B5, thinking to... Uh, Get some pressure against these uh, knights, maybe some action on the c file. Also, I need to develop this light squared bishop somehow. So, um, so that's a reasonable move. And now queen h6 is a terrible cancel that. 
queen h6 is a terrible blunder. So here you can put on your uh, tactical thinking hat and see if you can find the uh, tactic that black has in this position. Okay, uh, I'm going to give the answer away. There's actually uh, two moves here that are good. And you can play knight to g4, attacking the queen and the f2 pawn, or you can play the more dynamic uh, bishop takes f2 check immediately. <laughs> he can't take the bishop because after king takes, you have knight g4 check, and that's a fork of the king and the queen. And uh, after the king moves, you can grab the exchange. So that's just a winning tactic right here. And uh, one point I wanted to talk about is... Uh, how you can uh, spot these tactics in a game. And um, one way to think about this is uh, after I park the bishop on a7, I've got this uh, good diagonal for the bishop, his next move is rook e1. And at this point, I really should have made a mental note to myself. That rook e1 move has left this pawn on f2 where the only defender is the king. And so as long as that's the case, there's just lots of sacrificial ideas. There's just many, many examples in the chess, <laughs> in the chess literature of sacrifices on f2 after the, the rook has moved away and the king has to take back because it's a very forcing move. You know, you're, you're dragging a king out in the open or he just gives up a pawn. Um, so that, I should have made a mental note to myself right here. And then a few moves later, knight c6, bishop g5, knight e5. These are all fine moves. Queen h5. At this point, I should have made another mental note that not only is the bishop here, but the knight is, is ready to come in and, uh, and deliver a check. And so that means that there are certain squares that are off limits. And uh, you know I really should have had this in mind already, this, this idea of knight g4 controlling these squares and taking advantage of a potential fork against uh, f2. So that uh, after a move like b5, continuing my plans, when I see this move queen h6, you know, the alarm bells really should have gone off. I should have had this uh, already in mind, uh, thinking about it. That's how you can spot these things in, uh, in even fast time control games. So anyway, I was just not, not thinking. Uh, I was noticing that he was attacking the f-pawn, and I defended it with my king. But, of course, my, my combination was much more forcing. I should have just played that. Okay, he goes queen g7 and uh, bishop b7. And then queen back to h6. I was threatening to bring a rook over and chase the queen away. Um, once again, there's this tactic against the queen on h6. But uh, yeah, I was still thinking about uh, defending on the king side and then later going on the attack. But, uh, you know, when the attack presents itself, you, you need to grab it. Anyway, he plays king h1, finally getting away from these ideas and also unpinning the g-pawn. Um, I was immediately threatening knight here to uh, f three forking the, the king and the rook. So we both spotted that one. Um, <clears throat> let's see. He played, oh, I played rook g6 chasing the queen away, queen to h3. And then I just grabbed this pawn. So I'm still doing well, even though I missed uh, that tactical idea. I've actually kept the advantage through this part of the game. He plays rook f1. I go knight g4. And uh, he goes e5. And right here is where the, the tide turns. Um, I totally did not notice that when he played e5, he was threatening the rook. And the rook is really the linchpin of my uh, setup here. The rook is defending the knight, which is defending the bishop. And uh, when the rook goes, things just fall apart. And not only that, I can't uh, open up the h-file because this rook is uh, undefended here on, on uh, h8. So I have to take with the f-pawn. And that closes all lines against his king. So uh, so this move, queen takes e5, was really just a terrible move. <laughs> and I was surprised, actually. I, I totally had not noticed that he could take the rook. And so with this, starting with the queen e5, I was, I was winning up until this point, And I can play the move um, f5 here to block the bishop and still be winning. But now after this, I'm losing. And uh, he just grabs the rook. And then he grabs the uh, knight. And so this is uh, all good. Uh, let's see, when I looked at it with the chess sons, the engine suggested it was, it was a little bit better to uh, not grab the bishop immediately, but to um, save the knight with the move uh, h, h4, h5 rather, defending the knight, and then the bishop retreats. And um, that, that, anyway, is technically the best way to play. But uh, I just uh, took back 
and he took my knight and then uh, bishop to b6 I wanted to get my bishop out of hawk there who was, was being threatened and now queen f4 so he's uh, got a nice battery against the uh, f pawn here uh, which defended by my queen but it keeps my queen from moving away so I don't have any way of avoid I don't have I I have no way of avoiding the uh, exchange of queens here, so that kind of forces that. I defend my queen, so at least I can take back with the bishop, have kind of a solid setup here. And um, rook a to e1 he played, and I played h5. Now if we count the material, let's see, I've got a rook and two bishops. He's got two rooks and two knights. Yeah, so he's a whole rook up, and I have one, two, yeah, I have three against three, two against, yeah, I have two extra pawns. So two pawns for a rook. Um, yeah, white is just winning. But he's got to move quickly. At this point, he just uh, ran out of time. Now, these the, the blitz time control I play in is a uh, uh, four-second increment. So I think most people could, could play with the four-second increment and still win this game. But, uh, well, you've got to do it. <laughs> and he didn't. So so I will take the win. But um, <clears throat> but it's really a shame the way I played that game. There was some uh, nice play early on. I was playing some good moves. And then I just totally didn't, uh, didn't strike when I had the chance. So, uh, and that's... That's what happens. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.